Hi there, this is Dr. Bill White again. I'm a general dentist that's done nothing but orthodontics for about 45 years. And I did general dentistry and a little orthodontics with it for quite a while since 1955. Uh, and I had a unique experience of uh, practicing over in it. Nigeria, West Africa for about three years from 1961 to 64 and I'll bring that into this uh, video some here. Uh, what I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, well I want to tell you that I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society and board certified in that and that is an organization to help train general and pediatric dentist and in fact any dentist that's interested in orthodontics this is a good place to go and you can learn orthodontics here we have some excellent teachers we have a good uh, organization and a yearly convention and everything goes with it uh, we have board certification uh, you can just kind of go to orthodontic school, but it's uh, you don't do it in one or two or three weekends. you got to really work at it to do it, but you can learn, learn it now. All right, uh, that's enough on that. Uh, I'm going to talk something that's very important to me. This is malocclusion, and one of the reasons for its, its cause. What, what causes the malocclusion? Why do we have so blooming much malocclusion in the United States? And uh, I come up on one, one reason that I think is true. Now there's other reasons and mixture of the races and you get a big bone person and a Another person has got a little skinny facial structure and the, the child gets the teeth of the big bone person and it just uh, doesn't fit. So uh, you do need to take out some teeth on some people and it's ridiculous to say that you never take any teeth out. So that's, that's my opinion and I have a very good reason for uh, showing that uh, too. All right, uh, I want to show you the, the big reason, but I'm going to take this case and go through to me, and then I'm going to come back and explain some other things about it. Uh, now, this, this is my opinion that anybody that's going to be working on children should understand what is on this video and what I'm going to tell you after I get through to showing you this case. Now I just hope that all dentists know the importance of function, proper function. I mean a little thing like mouth breathing can cause one heck of a mess uh, in people's lives and everything. So we'll uh, pick up this case. It's a really it's a two-phase case and uh, I'll show you the, uh, the reason for that cute little uh, boy here. He, got, he sure got blue eyes, or at least they showed up to that. Now, when you look at him, when he smiles, he's cute, but he can't get his front teeth together, see. And so, when you study the case, and you look at him, he's got a little extra vertical height, not, not much. But it shouldn't be quite that far up. Uh, but just this slight extra vertical uh, height there, the lower third of the face. Uh, now we look at the when he uh, you pull the cheeks back and take pictures of this. Now what look what's happened here. This young man has got a crossbite on his side. You see the lower arch instead of being underneath here and have the upper arch come down over it like that 
the lower arches out here. Many, many, many cases you'll notice have that. Now, what caused that to happen? I think I have finally learned what actually caused that to happen. You may know already, but I don't think too many people do understand what caused that to happen. Now, let's look at the uh, just straight on. There's nothing uh, on there. That's just, he just can't touch these teeth together. See, they just don't come together right in here. And you've got this cross back. Now, when you look at the other side of the mouth, he's got a worse cross bite over here. Now, a lot of people, their lower jaw spreads out. And in order to chew, they just shift their jaw over and chew with a crossbite on one side and be meeting properly over on the other side. And that shifts their chin, and they grow up like that as a kid. They chew like that, and their whole condyle and the whole structure up there shifts to one side as they grow older. Now, this, uh, this young man... Uh, it, the crossbite came on both sides and as far as I can tell it's just worse over on the left side than it is on the right side now his midline shows that too see uh, it's further over this way he may have shifted some just to get his teeth together uh, better uh, now what you have to do to this case is is simple uh, to me. We went in and put a palatal separator and just pushed this way on over on both sides and uh, then came back and I put a, a tongue thrust deal in here with these little prongs up here that hit the tongue and stopped him from uh, sticking his tongue through his, uh, this gap right here and swallowing him properly and Finally got him swallowing correctly as uh, as best I could uh, tell, uh, and he turned out pretty good. But you have to you have to go in early and do this type of stuff, and then you get him finished. You put him in a retainer. Then when all the teeth get in, you got to come in and finish the case up. So it's a two-phase case. You do a certain amount over here, and you wait a fair time, and then you come back and finish finish the case. And this is a true two-phase case, and you need to do this early so that he's, he grows up with the teeth properly meeting. Uh, now, that's, that's looking from that, that side again. And you can see he, he may have shifted his jaw where he can get his teeth together better here to chew the food and anyway his midline is is off and it looks kind of like he did that uh, he shifted over for that reason now look at the upper arch you see these teeth instead of this coming on out like this and like this over here out this way which and then having the lower teeth fit inside these fit inside the lower teeth should be coming in right like that you see instead the lower teeth are setting out outside of this now I know this is true because I'm a mouth breather and I'm dirt near 90 years old and my bite, I bite my cheek because my lower teeth have been pushed to the side by my tongue being down there while I'm breathing through my mouth. And uh, I have that problem. And it pushed my lower teeth. I know it's not out far, but my lower teeth meet right up against the upper teeth and you tend to bite your cheeks. And I chew my cheeks. It's been a problem. I never understood why it was that way. But I do know now. Okay, let's look at the lower arch now. This is before we started anything. 
and the lower arch is a lot wider than the upper arch. Let's go back. Let me just go back. See the upper arch. And now look at the width of this arch. Get that down in your uh, mind here. And then look at the lower arch. Now why did this lower arch get so much bigger than the upper arch? And what it is, is this tongue was forced in this area by mouth breathing. You cannot breathe through your mouth and breathe under your tongue. You just don't do it. You, you breathe over your tongue. So your tongue is, has to be kept in the lower part of the jaw while you're breathing. And if you breathe constantly, the tongue will broaden these teeth out right here. And it's not working on the upper arch. So the upper arch fails to develop as like it should. Now, this makes it even or worse because it's reducing the airway space up above and the nasal airway is being reduced at that point. So let's, uh, let's go back just for a minute and look at those arches again. Now th this is after we finished uh, doing the first, uh, first phase. We widened it out and got it over on both sides. But let me uh, go back here for a minute. Now, you can look at this arch and tell the tongue is not being pressed into this area like it should be. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people have experienced some of the things in dentistry that I have, but I had a patient once that came in to me. She was 72 years old, and she couldn't talk, but she wrote me a she could write a fast note. <laughs> and she told me, said, when I was 69 years old, now that's 69, said, I had a beautiful set of teeth. They were just beautiful. And I got cancer of the tongue, and they removed the whole tongue in here. And now she's 72. So that's two and a half or three years, something like that. And the teeth had kind of collapsed in, in many cases, the lower teeth and the upper teeth both went lingual because the tongue was not there. And that is, that is a important thing to remember. I mean, the tongue has to be in place or it, uh, it will just not develop properly down there. So let's go on from there. Now that's the lower arch again, much wider than that. Now we put the palatal separator. I don't have any picture, but I'm going to show it to you on the x-ray in a minute. Put the palatal separator in, separated the upper the palate, and we put some torque in the roots of the teeth so that you don't just lean these teeth out. In other words, you don't want to lean them this way. you got to carry them out bodily, and that develops the airway. Uh, a, a, an airway that's properly developed may have twice the volume uh, area to breathe through as the one that is narrow like that. So that if it's not treated, you say, well, let's leave this kid alone till he's 14, and then we'll do the orthodontics. Now, if you think about that, years ago when I first got started, people just didn't do a lot of early interceptive preventive orthodontics. They just didn't do it. They waited until they were 12 or 14 years old and then went in and started and finished all of it. It is so much better. I can't tell you 
how much better it is. But you talk to some of the pedodontists. We got some pedodontists that, that teach for our organization, and they will tell you. I mean, if you leave it alone, you have a real problem ever getting it back to as good as it would be if you correct it when they're young, you see. All right, we corrected that and got it out, and now when he gets up and gets all the permanent teeth in, you can come in and uh, correct these other things. Good. But uh, uh, I'm going to go on and just go through the uh, case after we had done the first phase, and I put him in a retainer to hold him out there, you know, during that time. Now, they're not perfect now, by, but when we come back to do the second phase, we'll finish it up. All right, this is the way the teeth met in 2000, November of 2000, right there. And here's the way we got a meeting and I think this is 03 or something like that. Uh, anyway, we got that upper arch spread out. The teeth are normal. We didn't lean these teeth out, you see. They'd be setting the occlusal surface like that. We got the occlusal surface fitting in there good. So we brought the roots of the teeth out at the same time we brought the, uh, the crowns out. So that's something you... You've got to think about doing. Now the overjet and overbite looks good. Now again, here the model on the other side, the left side of his mouth was worse, and that's 2000. And here it is, 2000. I think it's 2003, something like that. Uh, may have been. We. I'm sure we got through this. A lot earlier. I don't have the dates on these, but later on I'm going to show you some 2003. There's the upper arch in 2000, and there it is in 2000. I will let, anyway, after we finished the first phase, you see where we soldered the uh, retainer, but we kept that that model right there. Uh, now here it is, 2003, uh, and that's the uppercase. Now these are not perfect on space here. This isn't properly rotated, but we set out the things to do in this uh, two-phase case. You you tell them what you're going to do in the first phase, and you do that. You don't have to do all the rest of it. Then you're going to come back now later on when he loses all these baby teeth when they're all gone uh, and he's got his Porsche's six year molars are permanent in there. See he's had these fillings done. Somebody is taking care of him good in that respect. And there's 2000 on the lower arch. You remember it was wide to start with and it's really out there. And it won't, may not even be quite as wide. And it doesn't look like that he's fixing to lose this tooth right here. You see the bicuspid coming in underneath it. And when he gets those permanent teeth up in there, then you start the first, I mean, the last part of the two-phase case. Okay, here he is. He's a neat, <laughs> neat kid. His eyes are still pretty blue there. And he's got that retainer in just to hold that out like it was. And his vertical height of the face looks like it's better. So we must have this young man breathing through his nose now. Uh, hope to God he is. Uh, but he looks more normal. And he looks good there. Now, this is 2003. And his... Date of birth was uh, January the 3rd of 90, and I think he is 10 years old when we started, and he's 13 something now. Okay, this is the video, I mean the uh, panorex that I took to start with. 
and we realized what we had to do. You see, it's class two right here. You can tell by this old uh, thing we took and put them together, you really was good. Now, this side's not bad, but this one is much more class two. Oh, I think it's the, well, this is the right side of the mouth. This is the left. I look at it kind of like I'm on the inside. See, and you remember the midline of the bottom is here and the midline top and up here. So this was better over on the right side as far, and you know, the cross bite was less. And this is worse on the left. Now, we drew on the Panorex what we were planning to do. We were going to move this out. We're going to bring this forward and move this back. Uh, we put these little fingers on the teeth and we put a palatal separator in. And that's what we were going to do. And we drew it on the Panorex. And that was a pretty good way. I mean, you had no question about what you were going to do later on. All right, here is the next video. This is the second, I mean, the next Panorex uh, that we took. Now he's got the palatal separator in, and uh, this is put together in two pieces, so it looks kind of odd here. But the, this is the palatal separator, and you'll notice the lower teeth come up in here further, and there are those little wire fingers that we use to stop the tongue from going in here, the brackets on the lower anterior teeth right in here. Uh, and this x-ray tells you a lot what's going on. Now at this point, our six-year motors are pretty close over on this side, and we got him out of the crossbite. He's actually class one over on this the right side right now. Uh, now, here's another one that we took the third uh, Panorex, and you can see it real plain in here where it's separated. And we you can put a palatal separator and go in and move it out, and it'll move the teeth up underneath it out and develop that too. So we've got the the fingers that shows three teeth, but it's only two there. And uh, everything's coming along good. Now, uh, it, this ends the case, the last one of these x-rays will, I mean, the last one of these panorexes will end the case. This is number four, and he's, of course, 13 years and three months old at this, this point, and he's just about got all these permanent teeth in. See, he's got uh, three here and three over here, and he's just got one on this side uh, just to come in. Now, when these go, or you can actually start the second phase before the last one is gone, and you can get in out a little early, and you, you're going to band it so and you can control this space right here. Uh, without waiting for this bicuspid to come all the way in. You can go ahead and start the second phase of the case right there. Uh, I think that's the last picture that I have on this side. It is. Now I'm going to run back to the front of this just a little bit. Now, what I was going to tell you to start with, uh, the thing that I learned in when I was in Africa. I had a clinic in a bad Nigeria. It was a, a tremendously large city and there were virtually no dentists there. As far as I know there was only one Nigerian dentist and myself and we had we were treated royally. <laughs> I'm telling you uh, everybody tried to be nice to us. <laughs> And we got invitations to fancy dinners and everything. And the, the clientele on one side was really super. I had the prime minister's daughter and the chief justice of the country. I worked on him. And then all the Americans and foreign people that were there in the country 
working, uh, they would go anywhere just to get in and get something, some little dental process done. And I did orthodontics on some of their kids, you see. Now, we, as a church group that I went with, and we had a church school in a smaller, much smaller village, but there were a lot of people in there. And we, they wanted us to come out and feel their teeth and check the teeth of the students in the school. So I carried this whole group. I had probably 10 or 12, uh, you only hired young men over there. And they worked in the dental office and they cleaned teeth. I was allowed to teach them to do hygiene work. And uh, they cleaned everybody's teeth. They even cleaned the American consul's teeth. And he told me, he said, that was the best job he had had. Man, they, they, they got with it. They, we went out to this school, and they cleaned everybody's teeth in the, the school. And I set up in one of the rooms. I had an air rotor that ran by. I uh, had a generator, and, and uh, I was able to really uh, do good dentistry there. And in that whole school, I filled only 12 teeth. And there was a lot of kids in there who had never seen a dentist. None of them had. And some of them were up like 12, 13, 14 years old. And in addition to that, I did all their orthodontics. And the only thing I did orthodontically was pull one supernumerary tooth on one kid because he's pushing another one out of position there. Now, you can believe that or not, I didn't have a camera to photograph and, and show that, but these kids were in this smaller village back out, had been there for, I guess, thousands of years. Their teeth fit their bone structure, and they had beautiful teeth lined up, just fabulous, and that's not the only thing. Out in those villages like that, back, see, this was 1961, uh, probably. Uh, every child had to nurse to get protein enough to, to really grow up and, and properly. And uh, these children would ride on their mother's back. They had, she had straps that held them on there, the big kind of a, uh, not just straps, but a kind of a cloth that wrapped around them and they stayed on their back all the time. And the mother would do her work with the child riding on the, her back. And they nursed till they were about three years old. Now, you say, well, that's crazy. But that's not crazy. Now, if the mother got pregnant, say, a year after this child was born, and then she had another child, say, maybe less than two years older than this one. Then the young child got the breast milk, and the older child got none. And they didn't have any protein in their diet, and some of these young kids and I've seen them that way. They're pitiful. They didn't get protein, and they got a, a problem they call quashioker, or they call it the younger kills the older. And uh, so the mother doesn't uh, have any relationships with her, her husband or what for at least a couple of years or so after the child is born so that they don't have another child to come in and force this one off so that he is able to nurse for about three years. And every one of these kids that I saw in that school had beautiful teeth. Now, what I have just figured out what happened 
I mean, they start nursing the day they're born. And so they get the enzymes or whatever is necessary to keep from uh, getting allergies and things that our kids have. And, of course, they were over there in the middle of the country, and they didn't have the smog and the mess that we have, you know, to put up with. But all these kids functioned properly as far as I could tell. Now, I want to back this up some. Uh, each one of these kids had beautiful teeth. I, and I just, I wish I go, could go back, but you couldn't get back there uh, now and find people that weren't uh, mixed and uh, giving them all sorts of other things to take. My wife grew up in the middle of the Kasachi National Forest in Louisiana. And she told me one time, she was, there was, their nearest neighbor was about a mile away. And they had, they were out there in these woods. They had a little farm out there. And she told me once, says, I nursed till I was three years old. And uh, I, I couldn't believe it, but she did. She nursed till she was three years old. Now, I, when I met my wife, she had a perfect set of teeth. And she today, she's 85 now, she doesn't have allergies and mess that I have and all this. And she nursed till she was three years old. And she had a just an ideal set of teeth. Now, does breastfeeding do that much for our children today? I don't know, but it looks like it does. So I'm just passing this on. And the reason for these malocclusions in the, is the mouth breathing, and you see what it did. To this kid the tongue wasn't staying up in this part of the mouth it was staying down here and I know that's where it stayed because I'm still a mouth breather uh, to some extent I use a CPAC and do all that good stuff and it helps and I don't breathe that much but uh, if I go to sleep without anything on I'll just my mouth will drop open and I'm breathing and when you're breathing through your mouth your air goes over the top of your tongue and your tongue is down here and it's not pushing this out up here it's pushing this out and the tongue that gentle pressure will move all of these teeth so help me uh, now that's my something that i just uh, think this is right i don't have any double blind study for sure on something like this but that's what I really feel is causing a lot of our malocclusion today here in this country. Whatever it is, of course, we have, I mean, mixed up people, races, and you've got big bone people over here on one side and little skinny people on the other, and they get married and they have children, and the, the child may get the teeth from the big bone, big broad teeth, and then the uh, they just don't fit in their mouth. So it's really ridiculous to think that you should never take out teeth on anybody. Now I had my teeth straightened by a labial lingual. My uncle was an orthodontist and my uh, mother worked for one for 25 years. And they did labiolingual. And uh, labiolingual, you couldn't handle an extraction. You couldn't handle, do anything with it. You couldn't bring two teeth together and parallel the roots to save your life. And uh, they just expanded everybody. And I think they just assumed this, uh, since they could not do that, they just they would say, well, God gave you all 32 of these seeds, and you got to keep them. Of course, they pulled out wisdom teeth later on. Uh, 
but there are people uh, that really need the teeth out. Now, I took uh, my, the Hispanic guy, the Mexican guy that works for me, is real fine. His brother has a restaurant down here, and he brought his daughter to me back when I was still doing stuff. And I realized if I left all those in, she was going to be extremely protrusive. So I took her four bicuspids out, and that young lady has the most beautiful set of teeth uh, you can imagine. She and her profile is not dished in in any manner at all, and she really needed teeth taken out to do her orthodontics. So this old idea of never taking any teeth is ridiculous, and I hope that if you get this, I don't want to get in a fight with people arguing about this. You have to, you should keep them up. That you do not, uh, that is not the best way to do, do this. All right, I'm going to hush up and uh, I hope that every dentist that's working on kids will realize the, in the very important thing of correcting function. And you got to do it young. Don't wait till they're 13 or 14 before you start working them. Get in there and correct function early as you can. So that's uh, my uh, advice on that. And I'm going to stop. And uh, I hope that you, the dentist, read this. I, I mean, listen to this. I don't care how many people look at it. it that, that's not what I want to do. I want to train people who are going to do orthodontics how to do it really good. So I hope that this makes a little difference. So I'll holler at you later. Bye-bye.